When I finished Canada, my first thought was Les Or next week. It was kind of uh, like, right, that's just a race to forget. It wasn't my best at all, but I knew Les Or could be better. You know, there was another week to find some answers. You get me down. I just struggled start to finish, to be honest. I was coming back off an injury and I'd only ridden at home the last few months. So, uh, yeah, you kind of think when you're at home that you're prepared and everything's perfect and you're ready to go. And then you go somewhere like Canada, which is a pretty extreme venue. You know, the tracks are really rough, really steep, really loose. And uh, yeah, I just struggled to kind of find confidence and be comfortable on those trails. There's a famous saying, win or learn. And uh, yeah, I think you, you learn a lot more from your losses than your wins. You know, when you're, when you're winning, everything seems easy. It's just clicking, it just happens almost automatically, it feels like. But uh, yeah, when you lose, you really start asking the questions and finding the answers. And uh, yeah, I think every day you're on a bike, especially every day you're racing a bike, you're definitely learning something. Well, I've been riding for a Cube Action team for five years now. Yeah, it's quite a quite a cool environment we have, quite a family feel now, you know. In the team, like we're all really close, like especially me and Zach, you know, we spend quite a lot of time together even outside the races, like we spend a lot of time in the off season or between races, just riding, training together, hanging out. And uh, I think it's good to have that, you know, someone that you can just be comfortable around all the time. And then when you come to the races, you kind of have a close friend that you can just uh, bounce off and have fun with. Once I finished Canada, my focus was straight on to Lazor. You know, after one race is before the next one, as our team manager Klaus always says. Yeah, so we spent the Sunday testing in Canada, which was really good. So we went back and rode stage one, uh, tried bike setups and stuff, and then on the Monday <coughs> we left hit the road. It's just a big travelling circus. Like all the teams, all the riders really get on really well, and uh, it's just this big group of biking gypsies driving across Europe or flying across the world or whatever it is and you know we all spend time in between the races and it's cool to see all these people again and it's it's quite interesting to see who's where when people travel you know do you get there before another team or after and, you know a lot of the time you might end up in the same place on the road on the travels you see people on the road or in airports or whatever and uh, yeah it's, it's cool to have that community no matter where you go in the world. Hey. The main plan first plan was to stop at Lake Garda go for a swim which was needed because it was crazy hot. Sitting in the car with the air conditioning on max, trying to cool down. It says in the dash it's 39 degrees in the sun. It's hot. Yeah, big heat wave in Europe, so to get in the water was nice. Although the water was actually still really warm. But uh, yeah, that was nice. Stop for lunch on the lake, you know, just enjoy and kind of totally disconnect from biking. <laughs> Yeah, like straight away when you drive into France, especially in the Alps, it's just amazing scenery. Like we drove over the Mont Genève Pass and once we just crested over the border, it was just epic scenery, epic light. Yeah, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful country. We left at 9am and it's now 8pm. So, pretty long day. Big shift. Ta da! Alright, what beds are taking? What? This one looks good. Bathroom. Two singles? Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. This is me. This is it. That's my bed. Back-to-back -back races are hard in a lot of ways, you know, physically, like at Canada it was a big weekend um, and then you only have so many days to travel, a big travel. Uh, you want to do some kind of training and riding in between and then you need to be recovered for <clears throat> another big weekend here in France. So uh, it's pretty, pretty intense, yeah, but it's cool, you know, because when, especially when you have a bad weekend, you finish one race and the first thing you want when you finish a race and it's not a good race is another chance. So I've been racing the Enduro World Series since the very start. I was in Pontala for the first round and I've done every series since then. And uh, yeah, this year was my first year I joined the Rider Advisory Board, which uh, has been really cool. You know, we kind of act as 
a link between the riders and the World Enduro Organization to, you know, which direction the sport could go, maybe some small changes here and there, what can happen. And like in Tasmania, I suggested that we do something similar to the motocross press days during the week to, you know, kind of give riders a chance to feel out the terrain, give the media a chance to talk about what riders maybe have, new bikes or who's riding well or not well. So here in Les Ors, we uh, piloted that with uh, Shakedown Day on Tuesday. So this time between the races is uh, pretty important really, you know, last weekend was the halfway point of the season so it's pretty safe to say that this season hasn't gone the way I've wanted and you know, the time between these two races I really want to try turn my season around and finish with four strong races that I'm proud of. So the focus this week has really been about how to turn it around and a big part of that is getting this new bike, getting more comfortable um, and just coming into this race you know, making sure that I'm not going to have the same race like last weekend. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in the 30s again. I want to be at the sharp end of the race where I feel I belong. So, uh, yeah, the focus has really been on making that step forward in a short time. Now with EWS, the last couple of years we have only one run of practice, which means you know a race like this, there's a lot of stages to cover, and we're only going to ride them once. So. A massive part will be watching our head cams. We'll film every stage, and then over the next few days, we'll probably watch them five or six times. In training, I, I like to stop, push up, check lines, make sure you're on the best line. So if you can find some lines that are gonna save you some energy and hold you some speed, it's, it's huge. Yeah. I think when I'm riding the best, it's when I feel like you almost just feel invincible. Like you feel like you can just pull up off any lip or just break late into any corner, just put the bike wherever you want and feel like you're gonna grip. That's, uh, that's really the feeling I'm getting, you know, I, I'd like to guess when you just have that comfort to, to really just push the limits. And uh, yeah, that's something now that I'm, I'm feeling right now on the bike, on the new bike. Um, so it's something I wanna try take to the race. You know, I'm not huge on goals. Um, I find whenever I set a goal, I focus on it too much and it kind of distracts me from my own riding. So for me, a goal this weekend is just to leave happy, knowing I rode my best, you know, put down eight stages that I'm proud of and I know I couldn't have been better. And I feel like if I do that, then the result will kind of look after itself and it'll put me towards the sharp end of the race. So um, yeah, I'm not saying I'm aiming for a top 10 or podium or anything like that, but that is where I want to be really.